Hello YouTube, James Baker CPA here and today I have a great video for you about the Corporate Transparency Act and if you don't know what this is, that's fine. There's a number of other videos on YouTube about this but I've watched a lot of them and they're kind of confusing. I've created for you today a presentation that goes through the steps and I'm going to zoom through it less than 10 minutes is the goal so that you can learn all about it, what it is, why it's here, what you have to do and why you have to do it and how to do it, when to do it, all listed on the screen for you. If you are a person and you have some kind of company below you that was set up in the US, an LLC or a corporation, this applies to you. There's penalties. I'm not going to put in scare tactics, but it's really important to do it. There's penalties and there's a lot of uh, exposure you potentially have. Let's go to my presentation and I'm going to go through all of it with you. This is understanding the Corporate Transparency Act and what this means for you. Here's some words. The Corporate Transparency Act was enacted in Congress on January 1st of 2021 as part of this act. It took them three years to get it all set up. So now it's actually starting January 1st, 2024. So right now you can't file the reports yet. It's opening up and being required to be filed starting this coming January. In short, let me give you a little bit of context here. We have all of these government agencies. We have FinCEN, which is running this. FinCEN, FinCEN is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. They are focused 1,000% on anti-money laundering, stopping terrorist financing, stopping evasion, and just criminal stuff. Just stopping criminal stuff in the financial system. That's all they do. Then we have the IRS. All they do is collect taxes. And then we have all these different departments in the U.S. government. The, the thing is, is that they don't share information amongst themselves. And there's a lot of protections and safeguards against information getting out where it shouldn't be. That's why we have to do all of these different reports. We have to send something to the to FinCEN that the IRS technically should already know on the tax returns, on the tax filings. It's kind of redundant, but it's also kind of good. The point of this whole act, the Corporate Transparency Act, it requires people who own companies or for companies, reporting companies to comply with the act and share their owner information to FinCEN. Okay, so who needs to file? A reporting, reporting companies must comply with the Corporate Transparency Act. A reporting co a company is an entity that was created by filing a document with the Secretary of State. So corporations, LLCs, LLPs, um, sole proprietors, no. General partnerships, no, they don't file anything with the state. If you file something with the state, then you have to do this. And foreign entities that have U.S. activities that register in the states. Like if you get a resale certificate, I think that would, would qualify you for having to do this. Who's exempt from filing? Well, there's a list. There's 23 different types of entities that are exempt from filing, but it's probably not you. I'm not exempt from filing. Companies in regulated industries like insurance, banking, financial brokerages, public accounting firm, licensed investment advisors, and then large domestic corporations. So if it's a U.S. corp that has 20 employees and has more than 5 million in sales. And then also is inactive entities. So if you open a company in 2019 but never closed it and you didn't do any business with it, you don't have to file for it. Um, but that's pretty low. If it's opened after January 1st and you have more than $1,000 of transactions, then you technically would have to do this report for those entities. So I have like 10 LLCs. I have to do this report for every single one of them. But that's example one. Subject to the exemptions are subsidiaries of inactive entities too. What information is shared to FinCEN? The report filed with FinCEN is called the Beneficial Ownership Information, the BOI, the BOI report. The reporting company must indicate what kind of report is being submitted. So there's initial reports, corrections, and updates. So from my understanding, you only have to file an initial report this year. So we'll go over the timing, but once I file an initial report, if I don't change the ownership, I don't have to file anything else the next year. I only have to change, file a report when I change the ownership. So if you buy a company, you probably have to update the FinCEN filing. But generally, it's not an annual thing. It's like a first time, one time thing. Many, many people are going to file it this year. And if you change your ownership or you change who is a beneficial owner of the company, then you have to update it. Information will be shared about the reporting company. And that's the actual LLC. And then the beneficial owners who are the owners of the LLC. So let's get into it now. Who are beneficial owners that must be disclosed? A beneficial owner is any individual who directly or indirectly either exercises substantial control over the company or owns or controls 25% of the ownership. So if I own 25%, then I am a beneficial owner. If I own 25% or more, if you have five people that own 20% or less, we'll go over it. But you kind of know if you ex exercise substantial control or if you are an ultimate beneficial owner. If you own 
it can be as complicated as you want. If you have a crazy corporate structure, schedule a call and we'll, let's go over it. But at the end of the day, if they're your companies and you own and it's your money, you're probably the beneficial owner. If you can file at, fire everyone in the company, you're probably the beneficial owner. You would have to share your information. We'll get to that next. Here's more stuff. Pause the video if you want, but serves as senior officer in the company, has authority for removal of officers and directly determines what happens with the company. Then we have direct or indirect substantial control, the final UBO rules, and this is so like, no one wants to read this, but, and it only applies to some people. Generally, you own the company or you don't, and you control it or you don't, and you know that. Specifically, an individual may directly or indirectly include as a trustee. So this is with trusts and stuff. So if you have trusts, talk to your trustees and see how they want to report it. Exemptions from beneficial owners. So there are five types of individuals who are exempt and cannot be a beneficial owner. Minor children, nominees. So if, if, you op if I open a company for you and I'm acting as a nominee, I'm not a beneficial owner. They just want to make that extra clear. And I don't technically own the company either. And even if I own the company on behalf of you, you are the beneficial owner it's your company and it's your money so that's what they that's what fincen wants us to like really have like understood creditors uh, the only interest is a future interest of the right of inheritance now finally what is included in the boi report reporting companies have to do the legal name address jurisdiction and taxpayer id the ein number so those are the five things that are uh, included they're required and then the second one is beneficial owners and uh, the beneficial owners need the full name, date of birth, current residential address, whatever your unique number is, and then a copy of the document. So it has to be a government document. So it's going to be a government passport, a government driver's license. I'll probably submit my driver's license and my unique identifying number is going to be my driver's license number. Who will be able to see this information? Very, very important. It's not publicly available. FinCEN will have it because you're submitting to them. Other law enforcement agencies with court approval non-US law enforcement agencies, foreign governments upon request, and then financial institutions and regulators with the consent of the reporting company. So I think that banks are gonna require you when you open a business account to consent to let them see the FinCEN document about a company. If I, if I wanna open a bank account for James Baker LLC and I go to the bank, they're gonna make me sign a form that consents me to let them see FinCEN's information of James Baker LLC. And since they'll see it matches because I filed and I'm the owner, it maybe it'll make easier to open an account. That's what I'm hoping that they want to confirm it matches. And I hopefully that helps us get accounts open easier. So it's really important to have these updated, especially when you're going to the banks, because I believe banks are going to request for you to sign a document, giving them access to these forms as a practical measure, even though they have the information anyways. Um, you can read about it, FinCEN Resources International Programs, pause the video, type it in. In short, FinCEN has the information. If you formally request it, they'll give it to you. The key takeaways here, nearly all entities established or registered in the United States will have to share their company ownership details with FinCEN. If you're more than 25% owner of the company, you are probably a beneficial owner. Well, you are a beneficial owner. If you have a series of companies, it could be more complicated. The information filed with FinCEN is not public or easily shared. So those are the key takeaways. The reason we have to do it this way, the reason we have to comply is just because because the information is just not shared between the IRS and FinCEN, and this is only for financial crime. So if you're not a criminal, it probably shouldn't affect you at all, but you still have to do it. When to file the first rule, it becomes effective January 1st. Uh, if you open a company next year in 2024, you have 30 days generally. It says there's, they're proposing 90 days, but you generally have 30 days from the date it's open to file the report. For our clients, we'll of course file this. Um, it's gonna be included and we'll file it for you when we open the company. If your company was opened in 2023 or before, you have the entirety of 2024 to comply with this. All my companies were, I mean, it's not even 2024 yet. All my companies have until the end of next year to actually do the compliance. I'm going to do it when I do the tax returns. I'm going to do it right away and I'm going to film it. And I'm going to share it with all of you. So subscribe to the channel if you want to watch me do my FinCEN reports. I'm going to be doing it January 1st or 2nd when they open the portal. They're waiting until the last days. I can't show you how to do it. How to submit the report. Reporting companies will submit reports electronically through FinCEN's Beneficial Ownership Secure System, the BOSS system. Amazing. Reports will not be accepted prior to January 1st, so we can't even see what they're doing. There's some really good facts at the bottom. You can see www.fincen.gov boi facts or dash facts, and you can read 
all there's a lot of information it's all very good information they have the faqs if you want to learn more that i didn't cover in the video check it out it's very well organized i really like it penalties for non-compliance so these are penalties these are like throw the book at you penalties there which is to say that if you're breaking a lot of laws they're going to hit you with these penalties too i don't think they're going to be too aggressive with just penalizing every single person all the time but they definitely can and they have the right to and th these are this is a serious agency the irs FinCEN agents have guns. FinCEN agents are can do whatever they want. These guys have way more powers than the IRS agents. I haven't researched that. I just from my understanding. Any willful violation may report in civil penalties up to five hundred dollars a day, and criminal penalties up to ten thousand, and or imprisonment up to two years. There's other statutes that apply to this. There's other fines that apply if you don't comply, if you're hiding the stuff. Basically, if you're doing stuff wrong on purpose, they can really throw the book at you with a lot of things. These are like the base penalties, but there's other penalties that could potentially apply. I've been watching other videos and they have other statutes and other references in the IRS code about not complying. And I didn't go into all of it because we're going to comply. You're watching the video. You're going to do it. We have a lot of time. You have until the end of next year to do it. So subscribe to the channel. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in the next video. Here's the example. I have 10 LLCs. None will have over 20 employees and none are exempt businesses. We will get the FinCEN identifier for James. I didn't talk about that yet, but if you file for many companies, base, I think on the first application you do, you can request the FinCEN identifier. So that'll be some unique number, some crazy number where you identify yourself. And then on future applications, I'm just putting the company info and then my FinCEN identifier instead of uploading my passport or my driver's license to every single one. You upload it once, you get your FinCEN identifier and use that for all of the companies example two here's a fun one fred steve roger tim and tina open an llc and each own 20 percent the llc is a reporting company for corporate tra transparency act purposes a boi report needs to be filed with fincen within 30 days to share the info of the reporting company as well as the ultimate beneficial owners it is possible that all of the owners have substantial control for reporting purposes whoever has substantial recall will be control will be disclosed as a beneficial owner because no one owns more than 25 percent it doesn't mean that no one has control if they all have equal control, then they all have control. It's someone has to be a beneficial owner of this company. If it's a publicly traded company, then it would be exempt. But a five person company is not exempt and someone has to have control. It's very likely in these instances, we're going to report everybody because we want it to match. Again, you want to be honest and you want it to match when you apply to the bank. If you if we send this only Steve has control and you apply to the bank and Steve only owns 20 percent and the bank wants to verify it and they're like where the other people, it could cause an issue. I'm not, I don't want to overshare, but this information is pretty guarded. Uh, it's really, there's a, there's many penalties and fees for this information being pro improperly shared. So FinCEN, if they share things improperly, they, they face potential huge penalties. You can sue them if they share your info without proper recourse. I mean, technically. Here's the recap starting 1-1, 2024. All entities need to disclose their beneficial owners. This is done in the boss system. It's private information. After filing, you only need to file updates if the information changes. And you can read a lot of it on the uh, FinCEN website. So if you need help with this, I, I recommend you contact us. We can do the reports for you. We can do the tax returns for you. We can do the uh, BEA forms for you. We do all these forms for our clients. If, whether you're American or a foreign person, these forms apply the same way. And I really want to help you out. Thanks for being here. Subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out more stuff like this. If you need tax, legal, compliance, opening companies, let me know. I'm happy to help. You can schedule a free call with my team. And uh, click the links in the next video because it's going to be really important to check it out. Okay? Thanks for being here. And I'll see you later.